continue in them for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you right so this is uh, uh, paul's uh, instruction to timothy so starts by saying uh, 1 timothy 4 verse 12 let no one despise your youth but be an example and several things right in love in word in purity in conduct and so on and then he goes on to say okay give attention to reading to exhortation uh, and uh, to doctrine right so meditate on that um, study that verse 14 don't neglect the gift that is in you right um, just given to you by prophecy so he's talking about the word talking about life example talking about uh, the study of the word verse 13 um, and it's talking about the work of the spirit, uh, just the gift of the spirit it says, um, don't neglect it, which is given to you uh, by the pro by prophecy, by the laying on of hands. So don't neglect like that. So life example, the word of God, the work of the spirit of God, the power of God. Then it goes on to say, meditate on these things. You know, think deeply about these things, these instructions that I've written, uh, um, and give yourself entirely to them, okay, wholeheartedly, without holding back, and so that your progress right, may be evident to all. So you know, that's the outcome. That's the objective of him giving these instructions. He's saying, you know, that your progress will be evident, will be clearly seen uh, by all. So um, just want to uh, read that and, and then lay, uh, you know, put that before us to say that, um, yeah, so if we want our progress to be evident, to be manifest, um, here are those, you know, those foundational things again, uh, which are, which seem to be basic, but yeah, but Paul is, you know, putting that across to uh, Timothy, who is a minister of God, who's uh, over, overseeing the church, and uh, and who has people maybe who are older than himself, obviously, uh, but he has this this word for him. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely uh, to them. You know, life example, word, work of the spirit. Meditate. Let it fill your mind space. Let it fill your thoughts, um, and give yourself entirely. And there will be progress. And that progress will be evident to all, you know, all the people to whom you are being set as an overseer, whom you have, God has put you as, as one who needs to be an example um, in thought, word, and deed, and, and teaching, and um, you will, that example will be evident to all, right? So let's, let's pray that, you know, let's pray that over ourselves and say, yes, Lord, I want to give myself wholeheartedly to these things. I want to meditate on these things and think about these things, things deeply. I want to retain these things in my, in my heart, in my mind, and uh, I want to see that progress being, um, you know, evident, uh, being manifest in my life, uh, which is evident to all, which will be a blessing to all. Right? Let's uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for these instructions, Lord, um, for us as ministers, for us as. Uh, a lot of people who who are, um, are seeking to be trained to be spiritual overseers and uh, those who are already doing that in some way or the other god we we just pray god that uh, uh, that these instructions will be written upon our hearts father god that even as we live our lives lord um, that uh, our lives will speak louder god in 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 all these aspects in love and faith and purity and motives and intentions god in uh, word and conduct and spirit um, and Lord I also pray that uh, that your word the living word that we would desire it that we would make time to read study um, that we will give attention to it that we will observe investigate and uh, Lord continue in it O oh God and also God the things that you put in our spirit by your spirit the gifts that you've, Lord, put in us, the deposit of it, God. Uh, may we be careful to not neglect it, but but at every opportunity, Lord, uh, lean and pull and, and uh, Lord, walk in it, Father God. And as we meditate on these things and as we give ourselves wholeheartedly without holding back, for these are good things, God, for these are things that you've established in our lives. These are things that you have brought also. Every good thing comes from you. 
So these are good things. So we don't have to fear. We don't have to be um, hesitant in giving ourselves to it wholeheartedly, Lord. Um, giving our, all our uh, effort, all our energy, and all our focus, Lord, even as we give ourselves wholeheartedly, we thank you that there is transformation that happens from the inside out, change that happens and progress that happens, um, that edification that happens in the inner man and that just overflows and flows out to bless others as well, God. And so we, we give ourselves to it. And yes, Master, we pray that uh, just even as we open our hearts, Lord, may the work of your spirit be the more and more in us, Lord. And uh, yes, Lord, let it be evident, Father God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, giving ourselves wholeheartedly, you know, uh, even in this area of uh, teaching on finances, uh, on uh, stewardship, stewardship uh, financial stewardship, and uh, this whole outlook on money, a whole outlook on prosperity and wealth and, you know, let it be a healthy perspective. And as we give ourselves to what the word of God says about, uh, about money, about success, about prosperity, you know, um, it'll, it, it'll just make us healthy, you know, have, have us have a healthy perspective on, on wealth and prosperity and success so that um, we are confident that we are, you know, we, we don't shut out um, that area of our lives um, uh, when God wants to bring things into us or bring um, uh, wealth and finances into us, uh, into our lives so that we can be a blessing to others, right? Okay, so last class we looked at uh, uh, about giving. And uh, so, you know, we, we looked at how we need to honor God with our finances. And it's not that he needs money but then he had instituted he had put in a principle of giving uh, in in his word giving as an act of worship unto him in in, in the ways of tithes and offerings giving to the people who are in need uh, giving to um, help others and uh, and so on so we see that uh, god has actually the lord has put this in place uh, in scripture so we, we looked at that last class. We looked at, um, uh, you know, why do we need to give? We looked at uh, it, it because why do we need to give to God, you know, as an act of worship? We see that, uh, you know, it is uh, it is indeed an act of worship because we are giving wholeheartedly and we're saying, because we see scripture that everything comes from him. You know, we looked at First Chronicles 16 and we also looked at uh, First Chronicles 29, uh, which talks about the fact that God is Lord over all. Right. Uh, maybe we just quickly relook, um, take a look at those verses again. First Chronicles 16 and verses 27 to 29. Um, yeah, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord or families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory you his name, bring an offering and come before him, or oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We see how offering, worship, tied together, and, uh, you know, uh, so coming and offering and giving to the Lord, uh, is it's really an act of, uh, act of worship, act of saying, you know, I surrender, I yield, and all I have is yours. And, uh, when we say all I have is yours, it's also things that I've earned, things that uh, you have given me, and I I bring it and I give to you, right? Um, the then we see in chapter twenty nine, uh, First Chronicles twenty nine, and verses uh, ten to fourteen, right? twenty nine ten to fourteen, where uh, where David says, uh, "Blessed are you, Lord." God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you. And you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I 
and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this for all things come from you and of your own we have given you and we just go down to verse 16 oh lord our god all this abundance that we have prepared to build you a house for your holy name is from your hand and is all uh, your own so david acknowledges that um, wealth riches honors everything comes from him and uh, you know giving to him a portion of it is really uh, you know it, it's really his so uh, it's, it's really the lord so just bringing that back to him uh, trusting in him uh, acknowledging that he is god is indeed our provider Okay. And then we also saw that it's because of our covenant relationship with others. You know, we are part of the body of Christ um, as believers. We are at, when we accept the Lord, we are, you know, we are brought into that relationship with God, with His people. We are immersed in the spiritual, baptized into the spiritual body of Christ, and members of each other. So we are helping one another, receiving help from one another, and therefore. You know, we are blessed to be a blessing. So when we give others, right? And then we saw that um, when it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to material blessings, that God uh, loves a cheerful giver and he is pleased uh, when we give uh, cheerfully, right? For the work of the kingdom, for to others as well. Um, then we also looked at, uh, I think this is where we stopped, we looked at some of the reasons when we looked at tithe we see that it is there uh, you know it it starts originates let me just share the screen yeah so it we see that it you know when abraham you know, is called abram he gave a tithe of the spoils of what he uh, took uh, from from the war from the battles he he gives it to melchizedek um, and uh, from what we know of Melchizedek, we see that uh, you know he's a type of Christ, uh, a, a priest. We see in Hebrews we read about that uh, is an order of that, that, that the Lord Jesus is referred to as a priest uh, according to the order of Melchizedek. So these are some things that we uh, uh, we le learn about him. Uh, and Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek, one tenth tithe. The word tithe refers to one ten. So uh, first foods of the increase, Proverbs 3, 9 talks about that, right? So um, about the tithe, we also see that the Lord is, uh, 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 he refers to not really bringing the tithe as, as robbing him as the Israelites were doing. Uh, in Malachi, we see that. And the Lord saying that, uh, you know, why don't you test me in this? I will open the windows of heaven. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and so on. Right? We so we read about um, the tithes uh, here. Now, some of the reasons we also looked at that: why do people not tithe? Okay, maybe there is a lack of teaching, lack of knowledge. Uh, maybe, maybe it's fear. Maybe it's people saying that, okay, I don't want to be manipulated into this. I don't want to be forced into this. Or I've had a bad experience of people, you know, um, exploiting, right, uh, my generosity and uh, people manipulating. And, and maybe it's it's just a fear, you know, what will they do with it? And are they using it right, et cetera? Uh, maybe it's selfishness, you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to part with my hard-earned money. And it also comes from a place of wrong understanding, right, of scriptures. Okay. Or there could be some, you know, religious lies, which is again part of wrong understanding, where uh, tithe is part of the Old Testament, and I am a New Testament believer. So, you know, like, like the many things which have stopped, or uh, which is discontinued, tithe is another thing which is there. So it's part of the Old Testament law is one such uh, you know, reasoning, maybe. But that's, that reasoning is faulty, that logic is faulty, because I think was in place as a principle even before the law came. Okay, that is what we saw. Even before the law came into force, we see that tithing was there. Um, before the law came through Moses and God gave the law through Moses, tithing was there. And, uh, and we also saw uh, that scripture where Isaac, 
uh, tight and obviously uh, i mean that i changed that reference it's uh, uh, 28 uh, genesis 28 and 22 not 29 22 where we see that um, jacob has a you know J jacob says that i will give a tithe of all and um, obviously it was something that was handed down a teaching or a principle uh, or uh, a tradition that was handed down across generations so we you know obviously uh, he had an understanding of it and he was he, he, he mentions that right so so it's part of a covenant relationship and and not really part of the law okay as we understand it then the other thing reasoning could be tithing ended at the cross okay so yeah there are many things that you know we saw that they are discontinued at the cross right uh, like the blood sacrifice yes because we see uh, we see that uh, very detailed uh, procedure uh, uh, for the sacrifice how it should be made and uh, you know what kind of animals etc we see that in the old testament we see that in exodus we see that in leviticus uh and we see we also read that when it come when it came to the cross you know all these were types and shadows of what the lord lord would accomplish on the cross right so on the cross we we saw that he shed his blood which was a final uh, sacrifice there was no more requirement for any more sacrifices like in the old testament we saw that there was continually the the the, the high priest would uh, would offer for himself and uh, you know for the people that uh, it would be it would be offered continually but here we see that uh, it was the final the perfect sacrifice right uh, we see also yeah i think that's where we stopped the other thing that we see is access to the presence of god access to the father like in the old testament again uh, in the tabernacle we see that uh, the high priest and only the high priest would have access to go to the most holy place once a year right um but all that changed and we see that uh, that we have been given access and we have confidence to to enter the, the holiest place right let's read that scripture hebrews 10 and uh, verse 19 20 from um, hebrews 10 and verse 19 therefore brethren having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of jesus so it's talking about what happened on the cross the blood was shed and now we have boldness we can with boldness enter the holiest by the blood of jesus by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh okay so we have access to his presence we have access to the holy of holies um to his to his very presence and acts i mean sorry uh, hebrews 4 and verse 16 also says therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may uh, obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need so we have we have been invited and the way has been made by the shed blood of shed blood of christ okay so so therefore now you know we have unlimited access to the to the godhead now we have unlimited access to god through the blood of jesus so all that has changed because of the cross okay so there are certain things that have been mentioned very specifically this has changed the blood sacrifice the 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 sacrifice well that has changed the access to god well that is you don't have any middle man uh, we because of what christ did he is the mediator and he uh, you know we can come to him directly we can come to him um uh, uh with confidence with boldness um let me just read uh, one other scripture um yeah um so this is uh I'm just reading from colossians um Uh, 
Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I yeah. I just. Um, mm, think uh, I'll just get the reference in a bit um, Colossians 2 okay um, I'll just get that in a bit so we we um, so we have access to God we and all that changed um, uh, we we can we have boldness to enter into the presence of God and uh, you know so these things are mentioned um, very clearly that it has changed uh, but there are certain things that are that are continuing you know, as it is for example when it comes to the worship of our lord when it comes to um, you know praise and worship and the, the the way in which we worship him we see in the psalms that uh, well, people worshipped him. Uh, you know, there are several expressions of worship. Right? Uh, we see musical instruments being used. We see the, the shouts of praise. We see we see a dance. We see we see um, applause, uh, clapping unto the Lord. Several and and one uh, you know typical uh, um, uh, a classic. Uh, reference is Psalm 95 which talks about uh, you know several uh, postures or expressions of praise and worship right Psalm 95 will come let us sing to the Lord let us shout joyfully uh, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving let us shout joyfully to the Lord uh, and so on and let us verse 6 talks about let us worship and bow down let us kneel before so we see all these expressions of worship and uh, using of musical instruments, which we read um, towards the end of Psalms, like 147, 148, we see there's the uh, there's the clashing symbols and uh, uh, and uh, talks about. Um, uh, let me just read from yeah. Um, if you 150, you know, lute and harp and trumpet and timbrel and dance stringed instruments flutes loud cymbals clashing cymbals and so on so when you come to you know the new testament well we see john chapter 4 verse 23 and the lord jesus says you know, those who worship the lord must worship in spirit and in truth right and and that's the only thing that we see you know because the father is seeking such to uh, worship him so there's nothing very uh, descriptively or you know uh, says that uh, mentioned that we should continue discontinue using of Old Testament uh, you know the instruments or the act or the postures and worship and so on the only thing is let it be in spirit and in truth let there be no hypocrisy right but there is that freedom as long as it's spirit which just comes you know uh, which is uh which is from uh this it's not superficial it is from your from the depths of your heart and as led by the spirit of god and it is in truth right so we be worship him as laid down in scripture so we don't see anything that is says that this is discontinued okay so it continues so we don't see any uh, you know description or any open uh, exhort, I mean, uh, um, instruction in the New Testament. Okay. So also with tithing, right? When it comes to tithing, um, we see the references like in the Gospels. We see the Lord Jesus. Uh, let's look at Matthew twenty-three. It's interesting. Um, twenty-three and twenty-three. Yeah. So the Lord says, uh, "What to you, scribes and Pharisees?" hypocrites for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the matier, sorry weightier matters of the law which is justice and mercy and faith these you ought to have done without leaving the others undone so he's just referring to the, the offering of tithe or you know the paying paying of tithe and uh, he's saying okay some things you have emphasized, but uh, certain things you have not. Uh, the weightier matters of the law, which is uh, um, justice and mercy and faith. Um, so these you ought to have done 
but the fact is that you have not done this you ought to have done without leaving the other thing undone okay so his reference is to the tithe and he's saying you know, justice mercy and faith by all means we need to do it without leaving the others undone okay um and uh, the other thing that we see in uh, 22 21 okay uh, we saw that last time render therefore to caesar the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god so we see um, these scriptures there um, so tithing as something that is instituted by god would continue right in the in the new testament as well so there's no reason for us to discontinue uh, and uh, and we don't see see that uh, being mentioned and the lord jesus says you know i came to uh, fulfill the law and the prophets not to destroy it okay so so we can as we we can it, it is safe to continue with tithes and offerings and uh, maybe if it is arms arms is for the poor to the people okay so we honor god in our finances in these ways so I hope that clarifies uh, anything that we might have about tithes. Um, um, you know, so some people have question about tithes. Okay, where should I give it now? Okay, uh, where where should I where should I give it? Because in Malachi it says bring all the tithes into the storehouse. And those days there was one, but now you know you have one in the sense you know uh, the temple being one one place. But now we know that. You know there are local churches uh, so where where do you give your tithes so tithes is uh, the, the practical uh, instruction would be where are you planted right where are you planted where you are receiving spiritually and where are you planted where you are also serving right um, and the bigger question is to, to ask is you know are you planted you know, that's the thing right so are you planted in uh, in a place in a uh, in a local church where you are receiving and where you are able to serve the lord with um, with the gifts with the abilities with you know whatever he is giving so um, so that's the thing you know are you planted uh, which are, again you might have some reason okay there's no you know i find that everywhere i go i find there are problems there are you know, there's some challenges there. Yes, you know, we are all works in progress. We will not have a perfect church. Okay, there will not be a perfect church. But then you can ask God, Lord, um, show me a place where, yes, people are, but then um, where the word of God is being, you know, shared in a manner that's uncompromised, where there is, uh, where people are growing, where the ministers are also growing, but they're working at it. They're sincere and they were walking in the light of what they know so where do you want me to be planted be planted in that place support the ministry the work of god with your tithes and offerings okay um yeah so that would be a practical instruction um right so then um you know some other questions could be you know i'm not in a position to tithe so that would be a you know I'm not in a position financially. I'm at a place where uh, I'm not able to. You know, the thing is that uh, well, if you are uh, uh, you know if you are earning or if you are uh, you know maybe it's not much, right? So in our own mind we set you know these amounts and say okay uh, this is a fair amount to give and this is not. But the Bible just says a tenth. Right, tenth to start with, it is just a minimum, right? So, so um, do it as an act of faith. You know, whatever it is that um, that you're earning that comes into you, um, that comes into your life, you know, financially, um, you take that step of faith and use it. And let's say you're saying, okay, it's 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 packed. You know, I receive hundred rupees, and this hundred rupees, uh, there is a list already. Right. Okay, uh, one to ten. You know, I I need to fulfill all this, and without that, and everything is important. It's not that I cannot. Right. So, fine. Just trust God. Just ask the Lord. Right. It's like we said. You know, it's 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 a. I think it's an act of relationship. I right? think expression of your relationship with God. 
right so ask the lord say okay god you know uh, i need to be able to do this i want to do this i want to worship you with my tithes and offerings um but you know can you just uh, surround me with your favor and can you take me to that place where i'm able to do this okay so yeah so it's it's real you know the challenge is real and uh, i don't want to say that okay you need you must you definitely must do it and otherwise you'll incur the wrath of god you know it's it's an act of relationship it's an expression of your worship to god ask the lord lord you know bring me to a place where uh, financially i'm able to do this god right now with things are tough very extremely tough right uh, and the lord will the second thing is to say okay i just have 100 lord and uh, i want even with this 100 i want to you know honor you i want to give a tithe of that and because the lord says trust me in this okay so you go ahead and do that but um, but you decide right um so yeah these would be some something some questions that or reasonings that we might have about tithes and about offerings so i just wanted to share that so are there any questions or anything else that you would like to share in addition to this uh maybe your own personal experience uh regarding tithes regarding giving um you can feel free to share um i think it all <clears throat> okay i don't see anything on the chat so i guess all is well <laughs> um you know feel free to uh, you know if there are any questions anything that you want to add uh, you can feel free to share right okay let's uh, let's move on uh um, the second the, the other thing that uh, you know when it comes to we're looking at the principles right principles for prosperity um which is divinely ordained or divinely inspired divinely orchestrated um prosperity or increase finances um that god blessings that god brings into our lives right um the thing is to listen to the holy spirit okay so while we look at these principles we are talking about the presence we are talking about the reality of um the relationship that we have with god so we are you know it, it's not just so when we look at principles it will seem as okay step 1 step 2 step 3 i need to do this okay um but part of the principle is also the presence and the reality of the relationship that we have with god a living relationship right so because we know that god is alive he speaks in the here and now right so as as believers we are privileged to hear the voice of the shepherd right? not just at you know at the crossroads of our lives or those defining moments those difficult moments um of our lives but on an ongoing every day uh, every moment uh, journey of our lives right so we have this privilege of fellowshipping communing with the holy spirit right and and that's the biggest i mean that's the greatest thing of all when it comes to a walk with god that we have the god of the universe fellowshipping with us communing with us and that's what the lord you know promise when we look at the you know in revelation we see that you know if he i i stand at the door and knock if any man open i will come and i will fellowship i will step in and i will fellowship right so that's the privilege that we have so listen to the directions the prompting of the holy spirit okay um don't be led by guilt or condemnation or fear but listen to the holy spirit we have the principles okay god this is what you know you want me to do i'll do it as part of the principles is also um this instruction of listening to the holy spirit okay let's look at a few uh, scriptures um let's look at 
uh, Isaiah 48. Okay, Isaiah 48 and 17. Okay, thus, saw, uh, thus says, we, we saw it earlier also. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God. Okay, so he who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Okay. Um, oh, that, verse 18, oh, that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea so um, the outcome of that if we heed to his commandments then the shalom of god uh, will be like a, a river ever flowing right? and like the waves of the sea you, know, you don't see it just stop but you know it just keeps coming and going so uh so it talks about the righteousness the shalom is like a river that flows so the thing is this, the Lord says, I'm the Lord, your God, who teaches you. Okay, so what do I teach you? I teach you to benefit. I teach you to profit. Okay, um, so what is my responsibility? Okay, because he teaches me, but also he leads me by the way I should go. Okay, he directs, he leads. So my responsibility is to learn and my responsibility is to listen, to find out where he is leading, right? To learn to follow, okay? To learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's a big thing. It's a foundational thing, but it's a big thing. Like in all areas of our lives as believers, to learn to follow the leading of the Spirit when it comes to financial decisions, when it comes to money, when it comes to prosperity, right? Learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, another scripture. Um, um, yeah, Isaiah 28. You know, this is um, interesting. You know, it talks about some practical things. Okay. Um, this, this is something that we look at even when we look at workplace principles um, and the wisdom that is there in workplace, uh, in, in scripture about profession and workplace and so on. So here is something that we see, uh, Isaiah 28 and 23, uh, 23 onwards, those uh, six verses, uh, seven verses, sorry. Give ear and hear my voice. Okay. Listen and hear my speech. And then the next six verses, um, next five verses, talk about uh, some very practical information, very, very practical information. Right. It's uh, regarding agriculture, uh, but you see the depth of uh, understanding. It comes from the one who who actually created, right? Created the plants, who set in motion the uh, creation itself, right? So we uh, verse twenty four. We'll just quickly go through. This. Does the plowman keep plowing all day to sow? Does he keep turning his soil and breaking his clods? When he has leveled the surface, um, does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin, plant the wheat in rows and barley in the appointed place and the spelt in its place? For he instructs him in right, right judgment. His God teaches him. Verse 26. Okay, who instructs him? He, God, instructs him, the farmer, um, the one who's plowing, and uh, he instructs him in right judgment, okay, right judgment, to make, to discern from all those choices, uh, all those pros and cons, and he, he instructs him, right, and teaches him. For the black cumin is not threshed with a threshing sledge, nor is a cartwheel rolled over the cumin, but the black cumin is beaten out with a stick, and the cumin with a rod, Bread flour must be ground, therefore he does not thresh it forever, break it with its with his cartwheel, or crush it with his horsemen. Verse 29, this also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is excellent, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Okay, so 23, give ear and hear my voice, listen and hear my speech. 26, for he instructs him in right judgment. His Lord teaches him. So here's this instruction that as it gives, and he says in verse 26, for he, God, instructs in right judgment. 
God teaches. Verse 29, God who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. So we have, you know, again, we have the privilege of worshiping. We have the privilege of following, walking with God who is excellent in counsel, who is wonderful, excellent in guidance, wonderful in counsel. He is called the counselor. Therefore, our responsibility is to learn to hear, learn to listen, and uh, learn to follow the teaching or the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, and uh, which is what uh, Daniel did, uh, Daniel chapter two, and uh, verses nineteen to twenty-three um, says that Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Blessed be, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes the kings and raises up king. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. And then he you know, praises God and he says, you have given me wisdom and might and, uh, and have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. So, so you know, Daniel just worshiping God, just praising him when he, the, the secret was revealed uh, in a vision to Daniel. Right? His heart just overflows with praise. And, and he says, you know, this is what, this is who you are, God. This is what you do. So since God has the know-how, since God has the information, we can trust in him and we can ask him right? when it comes to financial decisions, when it comes to oh God, uh, like, I need this. Right? Now you show me, Lord, what do I need to do? Uh, maybe it's business. Maybe it's, um, you know, uh, professionally also. God will show us. Uh, Lord will show us. He knows what is in the dark he knows um, uh, you know he reveals deep and secret things you know recently i was just reading a testimony about uh, uh, well this is not directly re uh, related to finances but definitely with uh, you know workplace um, testimony of this uh, person who uh, like many years ago he had a and now he's in ministry but he had a you know a, a mechanic um, kind of a business um, at fixing four wheelers and, and trucks and so on so there was one particular problem and uh, he was you know he and this was a time and as a church they were just exploring or learning about the supernatural the gifts of the spirit and uh, and putting taking those baby steps and putting it into practice in their daily lives you know it's not just about church it's not just about uh, during the church service but in it's in daily life so he had a problem with this particular new um, new model a new range of trucks now uh, so the client uh, sent that truck uh, to him for repair and he tried checking with the company and there was something the truck would not start at all it had actually seized somewhere everything else seemed to be fine it would not start at all so then he remembered hey you know uh, this is what we've been learning about the gifts of the spirit about word of knowledge where God is able to impart that information. The Holy Spirit, who knows everything, is able to impart that information uh, to us. Right? It, it could be about a person. It could be about a, you know, about a particular situation. Something that I don't know. Something that I'm ignorant about. But but He knows. So He said, "Okay, let me do that." So He made. Uh, he went and uh, laid hands on the truck. You know, hoping hoping that nobody would watch. Nobody was watching, and he prayed and he said, "Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, just reveal to me what is wrong with this truck. I've tried everything; it's not." And it immediately he had a he had a picture in his mind, and it was a picture of some uh, a, a, a section behind the fender, behind the bumper of the truck, like internally, and where there was a particular diode. Uh, he, he says diode, which is, which was not soldered or something. Right? So, but that was a picture. So he hadn't thought about that before. He hadn't seen it in any of the manuals. But this is a picture that he had. So immediately he, you know, put the truck up and then looked under the, uh, you know, uh, 
thing and then uh, he saw that yes that was it. It, was, it 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 was not soldered it was not in place and then he he put it in place soldered it and started the truck and the truck started right so for him it was a big lesson big big lesson that uh, well here is something um, that God is able to, this God whom we read, read, read about, you know, just like Daniel, uh, you know, going ahead and just praising God, this God who knows everything, he knows what's in the dark, he, he reveals secret things, um, he made known this, and it was a practical solution for a practical challenge that he was facing in business, right? So when we're talking about finances, when we're talking about uh, prosperity, stewardship, Right. One of the important things is to listen and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right. Now, now this is exciting, but sometimes it is not always. Um, it can be challenging. Right. When the Lord says, "Okay, now give to that person," for example, we're talking about stewardship. Right. When he says, "Give." Um, just one quick example and then we'll close you know i i was saving up money uh, for to buy a car a second hand car right? this was before our daughter was born like one day I, I had taken my daughter i mean taken my wife for to the clinic and she was we, we were expecting our, our child so i went by bike and as i came back it started raining and it was pouring and i was feeling so miserable i said god oh i wish we had a car and i was saving up money to buy a second hand car so I had some uh, money in the bank. I said, okay, this, this is not enough and I will. But then we came to know about a neighbor who had a, who had a need, right? They were severely in debt in, and so much so that the creditors were coming and, and hounding the, the wife and, uh, you know, and the wife was considering selling one of her kidneys in order to, you know, get some money and pay off. So we came to know about it and, and we thought, okay, let's ask some friends, right? Um, and as we were thinking, okay, maybe we should ask some friends who had money to give. The Lord just put it in my heart, why don't you give that? I wanted to give the money that you've been saving up for this particular thing. So I said, but God, you know, I started reasoning, but then this was this conviction was very strong. Give that, give it. So we literally emptied. Okay, it was it was a it was a very difficult thing for me to do because we were. Uh, in need ourselves and uh, so just took that and gave it okay now here's the best part oh, i don't know if you how you see it after we gave after i gave the family moved from that you know they took care of that debt but the family moved from there and till day you know it's it's been maybe i don't know maybe 15 years 20 years we don't we haven't heard from them we don't know where they are they have not repaid it was supposed to be something that was repaid. We not heard from them. But that thing, that instruction came from the Lord. And now this is the thing, you know, the Lord ensured that I bought a, a brand new vehicle, not a second hand. I was hoping for a second hand vehicle. The Lord ensured that I brought, I was able to buy a brand new one, right? Through very many things that happened, just to cut the story short. But the thing is, when you listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, it need not be always comfortable, right? It can be challenging. But he has a good reason to lead you in a certain way, right? And he always has the good in mind for us, our good in mind, right? So just want to share that and we'll stop here and we'll continue next class. Okay, right. God bless. See you guys. Bye-bye.